What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to part four in a series all about designing and coding a responsive landing page from start to finish. Today, we kick off the visual design portion of the process. Don't get too excited. We still got a lot of work to do before we actually present a finished design. And that's why this episode is part one of two in the visual design process. I'm really excited to get started. I hope you are too. Let's do this thing. The process you're about to engage in with me is something that I call style tiling. I didn't make up the concept. It was already a concept that existed. I just adapted it into my workflow because I really, really like it. Style tiling is simple. It's creating a visual language, visual representation of the direction you're heading for the look and feel of the site itself. It's simply putting together color palettes, typographies, textures, patterns, and maybe a couple user interface elements to give the client an idea of where you're heading with the project. You might be asking where you're getting all of this information to help you create this style tile or this visual language. Well, you're gonna go back and watch episode one, two, and three, where we did research and wireframing, and we did a little bit of inspiration searching, and we also did a quick competitive set. You're gonna take all of that and stir it up into a delicious visual soup, and this is where you eat it. Why do I do style tiles before I move to high-res mock-ups? Well, for years, I would make two to three high-res mock-ups right after my research phase and I would present those to either my creative director if I was at an agency or to a client uh, if I was working freelance. And for years, the same thing always happened. It would take me days to make two or three high-res mock-ups in Photoshop at the time because that's what I was using. And then they would say they didn't like them. They would say they had no idea where that look came from. They had no idea I was going in that direction. They didn't feel like it matched their brand. It was just slightly off and it took me days to be slightly off. So later on, I found the style tile process, which allowed me to take that workflow from a few days to a few hours to make two to three low res style tiles with general look and feel and direction. And I could present those to the client nicely and they'd say, huh, I like one, but not two or three. And then I could take that skin and build it out to a fully formed skin and lay that skin on top of my skeleton, my wireframe, and I'd have a project. That's how I started style tiling projects. That's why I think you should style tile projects as well. It allows you to have a clear sign off, clear direction, and a quicker turnaround time for the initial part of visual design. Okay, let's get started. You can see on my desktop, I have a sketch file open. You can use whatever design software you so choose. I'm just gonna be using sketch today. In my sketch file, I have my wireframe sitting there for reference, and I also have some designed assets that I've created. And those are just some framed phones with the product inside of it. Also some logos of different shoe companies we might wanna use. I also have my browser open, I'll just click that over, and in it I have my you know, inspiration mood board that we did using an Envision board. And this is simply gonna sit over here on the side so that I can look at things and kinda click through for my inspiration. Um, if you don't remember, my inspiration was bright colors, kind of young, fresh, not really skewed towards any general demographic or age, just kind of like a trusted, fresh, young, colorful vibe. So that's what we're gonna be going for. I'm opening up my sketch document again. First thing I'm gonna do is just hit A for artboard and I'm gonna create a new desktop HD. And we are going to name that uh, style tile. Okay, so now we have our style tile and uh, that is gonna work just fine. Uh, what I usually like to do is just create like a little tag um, and for the, the things that are on the page that are not the actual design, I like to just use regular old Helvetica and just drop them in the tag like that. Um, that way, you know, people know there's a distinction between what's the design and what is things describing or helping you understand the design. So I'm just gonna go like that. And I'm actually just gonna center these and I'm gonna create a symbol out of it because I like sketch symbols. We're just gonna call that tag. That way we can just, you know, pull a bunch more tags out like this and then really quickly just write like typography right in there and override what's in there. Let's create a color palette. I like to make color palettes uh, using a couple online tools. The first one that I like a lot is Adobe Color CC. It used to be called Adobe Cooler. That's just what it is in my mind. The other one I love is, uh, funny enough, Color Lovers. Um, is just a place where you can research palettes and kind of see them in use. So that's nice as well. But let's start with 
Adobe Cooler. What I really like about Adobe Cooler is you could upload an image that you're working off of, um, you know, to kind of get a feeling of the brand. We don't have anything like that, so I'm just gonna go to Explore, and I'm gonna type in running. Let's, let's say running. Um, and I mean, I think that's like, we see people are exploring similar things as me. So as we just kind of scroll through the palettes, I see a lot of fresh and vibrant colors. So that's really good. That's really encouraging. How about, um, how about uh, exercise? Exercise, okay. If I write exercise, again, it's not necessarily an exercise app, but we're looking for like vibrant colors to kind of work off of. So, um, you know what was really interesting is when I went back, let's type fitness, maybe fitness. I wanna tell you some observations I'm making while I'm searching for these things. One of the dominating colors I see is blue, right? So I see that a lot when I typed act or exercise or fitness or running, I saw a lot of blue elements kind of coming through. And I think blue is a trusted color. It's an honorable color, but if you lighten it up and brighten it up and make it vibrant, it can also be a really active color. So that could be like a good color for us. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing in here. So I'm just going to click on the info. I'm going to look at it you know, if you tap on the color palette in Adobe Color, you can see it kind of full screen. So let's just spread it across. Yeah, that's a nice palette. I might want to like, what's funny is like, because I'm not using Adobe, you could download these as like an Adobe Swatch, whatever. I don't do that. I just take a screenshot of the thing. That's how I do this. Um, okay, so that's one we can maybe play with. I'm going to pull a couple different you know, color palettes and I'll kind of fast forward through the search and we'll come back and see a few of them sitting in my sketch file. Okay, so I finished my search for color palettes and I have pulled in to my sketch file five different color palettes to start kind of looking at and assessing. And here's what I have over on the right-hand side. Um, so I'm just gonna start kind of narrowing down the things I like and don't like about them. Um, so first off, I thought this would be kind of interesting, like a really cool, crisp, kind of like monochromatic palette, just varying hues but I feel like it's a little too dull. I probably could have gone back in and tweaked the palette and brightened the whole thing up, but for me, that one's kind of out. Uh, likewise, this one is also, this one here on the bottom is also out. I'm not a big fan of that one. Um, I'm liking these two in the middle, and I like this one up top, but I don't think it's punchy enough, and there was only two colors when I found it. Obviously, we could you know, just drop in like a white and a few neutrals and make a palette out of it on the fly. That would be easy enough. You can even see the grays that are right there actually could look pretty cool next to it. But I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna ditch that one as well. I'm just making decisions on the fly. So um, I have between the two, they're, I mean, obviously super similar. I, I don't know if they were made by the same person even, um, but I feel like we have a couple cool colors and then some neutrals. I feel like adding the extra few colors is not really necessary. Um, so I'm gonna use this top one. I think winner, winner, chicken dinner, that's the one we're gonna go with, okay? So we have our color palette selected, we've brought it into the actual artboard, and now we're gonna make our color palette look a little bit more fancier and display the colors that we have selected. Let's do that. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to typography. I'm gonna place a few constraints on the project and on my search for typography because I could spend hours and hours and hours looking for the right typeset. I could be looking at examples. I could be looking at different things. What I'm gonna do is kind of pull from what I know. I'm gonna pull on, you know, from what's on my screen as far as what I see here, things that I like. And then I'm gonna kind of, um, Put a few project constraints like number one it has to be a free font 
shoe app, we're broke. We don't have a lot of money to spend on frivolous things like paid typography. Number two, um, I only wanna use one font in the project. I don't wanna pair fonts. I don't wanna get fancy schmancy. I just want something that looks good in the body as well as in headlines and throughout different things. Number three, I have to use that same font for my logo because I don't have a logo right now. And as the uh, owner of Shoe App, I need you to just make something up for me really, really quickly. And number four, it has to have a good variations of weights because I'm whatever font you choose to use here, I'm going to use for my business cards and different things. So if it could have a lot of different variations and weights to it, I'd feel really, really good about that. Those are the requirements for typography that we're kind of just on a whim putting on the project. And so let's go out and find some typography. So one of the reasons I like Google Fonts or Typekit or sites just like it is because you're able to explore and search but really narrow down your selection based on the requirements of the project. So for instance, there is 858 different font families on Google Fonts. I ain't got time to look at every single one of them. What I wanna do is just narrow them down. So I don't wanna look for monospace, handwriting, display, or serif. We're gonna go for a sans serif font. Did I mention that? We're gonna stay sans serif? That's what we're gonna do. Um, and I want it to have a number of styles. I want it to have like at least, let's say seven styles, okay? Um, I think also the thickness, it could be a little bit more middle of the road kind of thickness. And um, we're just going to, let's type some stuff in here. Shoe app is for, athletes. I don't know. We're just going to put that and then we're going to apply to all fonts. Okay. So now we can see how some of our copy or our headlines might look inside of our design. Um, and let's see, now I'm only looking at 28 and you can see like, as I just kind of change around, oh, I'm kind of liking that. Okay. I like where we're at. I like our selections here. So I like Open Sans. That looks kind of, actually I really like Roboto because it has a lot of, let's go a little bit bigger on all of them. Yeah, it looks good for the uh, like headlines. We go down there, looks nice maybe for like regular. Um, I'm gonna add that and like check that out a little bit later. Um, maybe also Lotto might be like a good, although if you look really, really closely in here, I'll try to zoom in, but you can see, I don't, I don't really like these sloping kind of curves off the descenders of the A. So that's a little bit too soft for me. I want something, I like Roboto's a little sharper. Um, I'm liking that. I kind of like Poppins. That could be an interesting play um, on maybe like a shoe app. I can just see the different, let's go up to semi bold. Yeah, that could be kind of nice. I'm gonna take Poppins. See, like Joseph and Sands is a nice angular font. It might be a bit too sharp, but we'll play with it. So um, we'll take a look at it. I'm gonna get one more, not too many more. Um, or maybe I will not get any more because I don't like any more. So we're gonna go with those three. Okay, um, some things to note. Now we're gonna build out, I'm gonna, delete my kind of requirements of the typography. I'm just gonna build out like a really quick and dirty typography system. I'll probably revise this as I get into the design or even into development to really perfect the vertical rhythm and all that kind of stuff. But for now, we just wanna show some examples of how these things can look. First thing we wanna do is we wanna do body copy. So I'm gonna bring this down here. I am going to take all text transformation off and I'm just gonna go with a nice regular you know, thing there and uh, a nice regular weight, pardon me. And uh, after I have my weight selected, I'm gonna pick what do I want, you know, the size to be for body copy on my website. I think 16 is a good size. You could do a little bit bigger, you could do a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go with 16 and it is kind of like not a full black, but like a nice off black like this. So let's just zoom in, you can see Maybe it should be a little bit darker than that, but um, now we have a body copy. We wanna create a couple sizes of headline above that. How do we do that? Well, uh, a really quick and simple way to do that is to use the golden ratio. The golden ratio is something you use in mathematics and to find the quantities and blah, 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 blah. I don't know how they use it in math. I'm not a mathematician, but I know that in design, when you see that like 
conch shell shape of the golden ratio. There's a number that is kind of associated with it, and it's basically one square or circle that you are rotating and upping the size by this number, 1.6. 18033988875, whatever. By multiplying your typography size, like in our case, 16, so watch, I'm gonna do times 16 right here in the Google calculator, press equal, I get some sort of size that gives good contrast between one line of typography and the next, like in our case, body copy and some sort of larger headline. I'm gonna round these up, and so I'm gonna round that number up to 26, and I'll come back in here, and hit this to 26. This is in no way final, and we will revise this and work on this as we're building out the rest of the design. We just wanna add a little bit of contrast right now, but using some of those awesome weights that we have. Like for instance, I'm gonna make, you know, like maybe my H1, is gonna be like that, and maybe I'll even add some character to it. I think all of this is a little bit cramped though, and so I'm just gonna grab all of them and add a little bit of tracking or character space or whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah, just track it out a little bit, and that gives it, each letter, a little bit of room to breathe, okay? Um, and so that's looking pretty nice. This is like bold. What if we try it in black? Is that too, no, that's not bad. And then the rest of these, can be, let's see, we have regular, then medium, then bold. So maybe we can do bold on these like that. Now we'll keep them lowercase. And then we have something like that. I'm gonna open up a plugin. I use uh, Craft by Envision, and that's a really easy way just to add some different like typography. We have our body copy. You can also tell that the line height, um, it needs to be a little bit higher as well. So I'm just gonna space that a little bit. I am right now not even gonna worry about making it perfect. I'm just gonna kinda do it by eye. Okay, now you can see I have a little bit, the measure is a little bit long, so I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit and line it up like that. And okay, that's looking pretty good for some starter typography, okay? That gives us a good idea. We might, I mean, you could do something if you wanted, like add like a bullet list or a block quote in here. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just keep it like this for now. This is kind of okay. We're gonna move on to image treatments right now, which is an important kind of step in setting a tone or a visual style for the project that you're working on. You have to do a little bit of art direction and go out and gather some different assets. And so I'm gonna head out to the web and I'm gonna look for some free stock photography. So I'm gonna go out to a few sites that uh, are really, really good for free, royalty-free stock photography, Pexels being one of them, Unsplash being another really good one. We're gonna look for some stuff like running and fitness, um, and we're gonna see what we can find. Okay, we're back. We've done some image selection and now I'm just gonna drag those into my file. So now we've kind of brought them in and gotten them to a decent size. I wanna just pull this over here and spread them out a little bit. I think mainly what we have is like a mixture of shoes. I'm just gonna flip this so we can see the people and the bridge, that's good. And a mixture of shoes and you know, not just shoes, but also like scenes of people wearing shoes, which, you know, it's starting to become a little bit more like fitness shoe. But again, this is all concept. I'm making this up on the fly. Um, so, okay, so we have some images in there and they're looking pretty good. I think they give us a good feeling. Like if you took a step back already, maybe it's a little bit sparse and a little bit sterile. We still don't quite yet know what this website's gonna look like. We have a color palette and a couple of photos. Now we're gonna actually start applying some of our color palette to the things we have here in our, our design or in our style tile. Um, so we could say like, maybe like our sub headline is gonna be like a color. Um, let's pick a color, I don't know, maybe it's like that. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Maybe we wanna do some image treatments. Like let's pull this up over the top here and let's, treat these images a little bit. So what if I like, what if I did a fill over this image and put like a gradient 
that kind of matched up with our colors. Like there's a blue and a green. Okay, so let's just like give it an interesting angle and bring the opacity down a little bit, maybe even multiply it. Nah, let's not multiply it. Let's just do opacity like that. Okay, that could look kind of cool. Let's do another one over here maybe that has like, let's bring this guy out in front. Actually, let's do the shoe. Um, let's do another one, another fill like this with a color, except this time let's do more of like blue and a purple. We wanna make sure it's actually our blue and our purple. So let's grab our purple there and our green. Nope, that looks horrible. Let's go blue. Okay. So we're starting to come up with kind of some treatments and some styles. What if we took our text here and we pasted it here and made it white like this? That could look kind of cool. Um, we could just shrink it down like that and do like that. So now we're doing a little bit of image treatment there. Next thing we're gonna do is just take our style tile and give us a little bit more space because the last thing I think we really wanna do is we probably want to do some interface element stuff. So let's do that. I'm just gonna drag a new tag down and I'm just gonna rename it like uh, UI elements like that. And here's where you get conceptual, experimental, not designing specific things, but just experimenting on the page. And we're going back to reference what we know in here. So I see a lot of white, I see angles, I like bold color, um, I see phones like overlaying certain elements here. So we wanna kinda include some of that stuff. That's gonna be really, really nice. This is where some of our assets come in and we can wow our clients and just unlock our assets. And here's all these, you know, let's take all these assets out of a folder so they're not blocking me. I'm gonna group that thing together. I'm gonna bring this in. I literally just, I brought these assets in and I think I, I, they were either the right color or I, I, I did a color overlay on all of them. Um, so again, we're not gonna design everything, but we might do is kind of come in here like that. And let's do an example of that angle. So what is this? This is F9, so we wanna do that. Uh, there's our thing there. I'm gonna do an angle. There we go. And uh, let's drop it to the back. Let's bring one of our phones in. Let's bring this phone in. That could look cool. Uh, shrink it down. Let's show some overlap there. And now maybe let's, uh, oh, we didn't do iconography. Um, that's a thing. So I'm gonna run out and grab, let me just noun project. I'm just gonna use the noun project for some inspiration really quickly. I'm gonna type like shoe. Let's see what I get for shoe. Oh, those are atrocious. Mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. Uh, uh, uh. Too silly. Too silly for me. We could maybe get down with this. Okay, let's do one of these. So again, we're just going to maybe drag one or two of these icons, maybe even the third one in there. And we're gonna say thank you really quickly to all of these icon artists for providing this concept stuff for us. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Kokoda. You did good work. Okay, but we are gonna delete their names. Okay, we've deleted their names and we've kind of consolidated and made them a similar size. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, let's just drop one or two of those down here and let's make an actual interface element here. So what about like kind of a rounded, let's do like a, when we look at our wireframe, maybe like one of these cards here, okay? So let's make that white and we'll drop it behind the truck, we'll add a little bit of shadow. Let's blur it out a little bit, drop the opacity of the shadow down and give it some offset like that. That's kind of cool. You know what else could be cool? Let, how, how could we integrate color in this? We could make the icon, obviously, right? Like one of our, one of our colors, let's make it 
pop like that. So that could work. Um, and then what if we matched up, let's take down the border radius of this, the border radius of this guy a little bit. And I don't want to fill it. I want to do like an inner shadow on the top that is the same color. And then I'm going to use some of my typography here, like this and this. I'm just going to paste it over here off the board. I'm going to delete the large majority of the content, pull it onto the board, and let's just line it up. Ready? We're going to do like this. Let's center align this text like that. Okay. And then bring the measure of the text in, and we'll drop that guy above, and maybe we'll Drop the icon down a little bit. Okay. That could be a card. I mean, we don't know. Maybe it could be a card, but maybe it's just an example. And I think it's not a bad example. And we just overlay it like this. Drop these icons down here. Let's just bring the rest of the color into these other icons while we're here, like blue there. Okay, and they kind of look weird just sitting out there on their own, but I feel like that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, looks like, oh, you know what we could do? Let's make sure the angle like matches like that, okay? So here's what we did. We started with a blank canvas and we worked off of the inspiration that we had and what we knew about the client or product to create a color palette. After we create our color palette, we're able to, with the same information, look for typography that has the type of characteristics, the look, feel, vibe, whatever you wanna call it, that helps us to promote this brand's kind of identity, even through simple typography like this. We created a varied typeset by using the golden ratio and giving it contrast and weight and excitement in the typography. We, apply, we started applying the typography and the color throughout the rest of the style tile. So you can see we had some colored headlines. We did image treatments and image selection. This is our direction right here. We did a good job, I think, of just kind of creating, here's the type of stuff we want. We want to focus not on faces. We do want some people, but not focus on their smiles or their faces. We want shots of shoes, so on and so forth. And then we brought the whole thing down into the bottom where we did highlighted some user interface elements. We pulled in some frame phones, some iconography that works for us, some brands and icons that are kind of give the idea of what that section of the site might look like, could look like. And then lastly, we created a custom interface element like this little features card um, that should give you know the client or whoever's in charge of decision making what direction we're heading. And so this is what we've come up with. This is low res mockup. You could present these and it's a clear shot to the direction that you're heading. I will most likely utilize a lot of the things that I have in this document in part two when I create my visual design. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do lots of content about design and development and there's way more videos in this series coming up. So maybe stick around. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and I hope you guys are having an amazing week, designing amazing things, making amazing things, and getting ready to finish this thing out with a high res mock-up. I'll see you guys in the next one.